Hello guys, my name is Josh and I'm an international student at BOU-Idaho. Today we're going to go over what it takes for an international student to attend BOU-Idaho, BOU-Provo, BOU-Hawaii, or Ensign College step by step. I'm also going to keep track of how much each step costs over here. Remember that the cost varies from one country or city to another, so this is just a rough estimate so you can have an idea. To keep this video short, I'm not going to go over what it takes to impress the BYU admissions office or specify much on any of the steps. The purpose of this video is to have to build a reference so that you can come back to this video and say, OK, I already completed this step. What do I have to do next? Because when I applied to BYU Idaho, I realized that for international students, there's just so many things you have to do but there's not a structure to it that you can just follow step by step. You have to visit at least 10 or 12 different web pages, call BOU Idaho once every other week, probably just to make sure you're doing the right things. So I hope this video serves that purpose. Okay, let's get to it. Number one is gonna be the TOEFL. So the TOEFL is one of the options for the English test. Yes, there's a couple other options, but this is the one I'm most familiar with, so we're gonna go with that one. If you went to high school in Ghana or in England or any place that speaks English, then you probably don't have to take the TOEFL. Now, this exam costs $220, which is gonna be your first expense on the list. There's also a home edition, and I'm pretty sure it costs just this much. Just make sure you have a microphone and a camera, video camera that works so that you can take the exam at home if that's what you choose to do. Not only is the exam booked a few weeks in advance, after you take the exam, it takes at least a week for ETS, which is the institution that, you know, administers the TOEFL, the TOEFL, the TOEFL, the institution that administers the TOEFL to send these results over to the BYU you're applying to. So just make sure you give yourself enough time so that you have it done by the deadline. So I would say take the TOEFL at least one month before you're planning on submitting your application. If you can understand this video just fine and you can speak as well as you can listen and you can write as well as you can speak and you can read as well as you can write, then this shouldn't be too hard for you. You only have to score between 61 and 80 points. Number two on the list is gonna be the course analysis. Course analysis is uh, an evaluation that takes your degree, your high school degree from wherever you went and basically translates it, if you will, to American grading. Make sure you submit your diploma or your certificate where you have your grades, not just your high school diploma with your name, but where you have your actual grades. Now, before you send your degree to an accredited credential evaluation institution, make sure you have a translation of that document in English if you don't go to high school in an English speaking country. Translating your degree is gonna send you back another $25. Now. Please make sure it's a course by course evaluation and not just an equivalency degree. Because an equivalency degree is just going to tell them, yes, they graduated high school, but a course by course analysis is what's going to tell BYU that what, what your grades were. And that's what they care about. Some companies, such as Spantran, will send BYU the finished analysis so that you don't have to wait until they get back to you and then mail it yourself. Just make sure to check that they do it because you don't want to be waiting for your results to be sent to BOU by the company and then learn that they were mailing them back to you and then send them. So just be on top of that. They usually charge about 150 bucks. Number three is supply. The good news is that you already did the stuff that takes the longest to process. So now you can focus on doing what is actually one of the simplest parts of the whole process of getting to BYU. The application is pretty straightforward. You're gonna to go to apply.byu.edu and then you're gonna fill out every field. I'm pretty sure your average six-year-old could do it. It's, it's actually really simple. The application fee for BYU is $35. Several months later. Congratulations, you've been admitted to BYU. Now the fun begins. Number four is going to be getting your I-20. An I-20 is the most important document you've never heard of. Without it, you cannot apply for an F-1 visa and get to the United States to study. Getting the I-20 is going to take a little bit of work, so I just put it up to four simple steps. Number one, fill out the questionnaire. There's a questionnaire online on a page called Synapsis. It's pretty straightforward, and that's how you apply for an I-20. Number two, submit a copy of your passport. That's it. That's, it. that's the whole step, too. Number three, and this is the most interesting one, 
get proof of funds from a sponsor. So BYU wants to know that you're not going to ask for financial aid just because you don't have enough money. They want to know that you have enough money to come to BYU. So what they do is they ask for another person to vouch for you, another person to say, hey, I'm going to pay for their housing and tuition and whatnot. And for that, you have to prove that they have enough funds in a bank account and a single point in time. This person is what they call a sponsor, and it can be a family member, it can be a close friend, uh, it could even be your mission president. The amount of money that you have to show in a bank statement ranges from $13,000 to $22,913, depending on which university you're going to. I know it's a lot of money, but you only have to show it at one point. I'm not saying that you should, you know, try to pull the money from different places, put it in a bank account, take a snapshot of it and then send it to BYU because that could be considered deceiving the university. I'm not recommending that at all. So yeah, if the bank you're using is not a bank that prints their statements in English, you're going to have to translate that again. And that's going to set you back $100. And number four is going to be make the international student deposit. The international student deposit is a fund that you can access during your time at BYU to pay for tuition or books or housing, or sometimes even your ticket to go back home in case you can keep studying there. It's a way they make sure that you're actually coming here to study and you're not just using the F1 visa get into the United States, and then do something else. The deposit is $4,000 for BYU Idaho and BYU Provo, $5,000 for Ensign College, and a whopping $500 for BYU Hawaii. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. If it was, just ask me questions in the comments and I'll try to answer as many as I can. Number five is going to be getting that F1 visa. So go ahead and enter the United States Department of State website and find the form to apply for an F1 visa. I know it feels like it's never gonna end because it's just so, so long, but trust me, it does end. This fossil of a website will show you so many questions about your personal life, about things that you'll intend to do, about things that you've done in the past. And I don't know, they, they, I think they come up with questions on the spot and they just add them to the questionnaire because there's just so many. To apply for the visa, you're going to have to pay $160 on an application fee, which just covers the appointment. And then, because it's an F1 visa, you're going to have to pay a $350 SEVIS fee. Once you've made these two payments, you can sign up for an appointment at a website that does not look like it was made before the year 2000. Once the date comes around, show up early to the appointment, wait in line for that two-minute interview that can determine the rest of your life. If they say yes, you are worthy of her F1 visa, they will keep your passport so they can stamp a visa on it. If they don't think you should come to the US, they will return your passport back to you right then and there. They should mail it back to you within a couple weeks and there you go. Which brings me to step number six, which is traveling. Good for you. I mean, really, you've gone through a long process. You paid a bunch of money so you could, you know, come to the BYU you chose. I know this is the easiest part, but there's one caveat. You have to get here not earlier than 30 days before school starts. So if school starts on January 7th, you have to get here on December 8th, the earliest, or otherwise they won't let you in. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments.